I am Caitlin Vance. I am the manager of planning and strategic initiatives at Dominion Energy. We serve uh, part of Virginia and a little portion of North Carolina as the transmission owner. Uh, we also uh, own distribution and generation assets in, in that footprint as well. And I'm Andrea Pincetti. I'm an engineer at Dominion Energy in the Electric Transmission Strategic Initiatives Group. And I do work on uh, running several different types of simulations uh, to address operational challenges on our system. We purchased our first RTDS uh, simulator in the early 2010s and we've been working with it ever since. It was purchased as a part of sort of a vision to better understand our system and some of the, the challenges that were arising and, and basically questions that we couldn't really answer with the tools that we had at that time. Some of the I guess like main drivers that like really uh, showcase the power of RTDS and like uh, the value of it uh, for us was a lot of like the hardware in the loop capability for protection studies as well as uh, for under better understanding uh, our fax devices in our system. Uh, so we do have several controller replicas that were able to uh, interface with RT the RTDS to better understand how these devices actually behave under different scenarios and system conditions. And that's really been, like again, like one of the main drivers that really made it so that like, we continue to pursue RTDS and invest in this technology. Um, and similarly, now we are at a point where, obviously with the increase of penetration of IPRs, inverter-based resources, we are starting to uh, kind of needing to also do this similar type of testing and uh, understanding for these inverters, uh, and so a big push in the future for us would be to again understand better these control algorithms and how they behave under different conditions and how to better optimize it uh, for our system. Another use case that for our TDS that we've taken advantage of is also for operator training. Uh, so what we've done is, you know, you have the power of our TDS, like very high detail modeling, real-time simulation, but then on top of that with the runtime environment, you can create very simplified uh, overviews of the system and simplified representations of the system, uh, which is easier for operators to understand. And so we can you know, leverage that, the full power of RTDS, but also in a more user-friendly way. Yeah, I mean, support uh, and working with RTDS as always, I think it's been great for us uh, from the start. Uh, and it starts again with just like initially, like having conversations to understand our needs and how, like what kind of like, devices and setup we might need uh, to address uh, the problems and the studies that we're pursuing. Uh, but then also like once we actually get into using the device, the RTDS, um, the support that we receive both software related and hardware has always been great. Uh, there's already been a couple of instances where we might have an issue with a hardware component of our system and we might put in a request on a Thursday and Friday and you walk into the office on Monday and like the new piece of equipment, the replacement is already waiting for you. And that's really been like tremendously helpful for us to really uh, help us in like doing what we need to do uh, without any kind of delays. Uh, and it really also shows like the level of support and engagement that we can get with our TDS, which is, uh, which is something that it's important for us and it's good that we can rely on it. The RTDS lab itself has grown tremendously. It started in a closet and now it has a really wonderful uh, facility surrounding it and has expanded significantly to not only interact with protection devices but now to also interact with our uh, fax device replicas that we have on site so that we can better understand uh, upgrades to the fax devices, um, questions that we have about things that are happening in the field. As part of the build out of the RTDS system that we have, uh, a portion of that is so that we can model more of our system uh, in this environment to help with system restoration as, as a part of uh, supporting dynamic analysis when the system is particularly fragile. And so that has involved a, a larger, the building of a larger scale model, uh, which supports in a few different ways, not only just for system restoration, but now also for as we're seeing more issues associated with the IBR integration that we have, that we have a, a pipeline to be able to recreate 
uh, different scenarios because a lot of the time the, the issues that we've seen aren't necessarily under what's normally studied as a part of a planning process but are a function of the system being particularly weak in outage seasons where you have a, a lot of equipment offline and a lot of generation, traditional generation offline and so that workflow that we've been building out now for a little while will, I think will pay a lot of dividends.